Hi everyone, thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Lewis Kren, board certified family medicine physician. And in this video, I wanna address some of the headlines that I've seen recently regarding breakthrough cases of COVID-19 after somebody's been fully vaccinated. I wanna go through the data, tell you why this actually wasn't that unexpected, and then explain why you shouldn't let these headlines scare you. All right, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is define what a breakthrough case is. A breakthrough case is a PCR confirmed positive case of COVID-19 that happens at least 14 days after somebody's been fully vaccinated with a COVID-19 vaccine. In the case of Moderna and Pfizer, that would be two weeks after your second dose. In the case of the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, that would be 14 days after your single dose. So what are we seeing so far regarding the cases? Well, the CDC put out some data last week that indicated just over 5,800 individuals have been reported as being PCR positive with COVID-19 after being fully vaccinated. Of those about 5,800 cases, 40% of them were actually in individuals who were over the age of 60, which isn't exactly all that surprising because we know as we age, our immune system wanes and we may not make as good of a response to the vaccine as younger individuals might. Also, interestingly in the data, it was noted that 65% of the breakthrough cases happened in females. Not sure what to make of that one yet. Additionally, 29% of the cases were asymptomatic, 7% of the cases required hospitalization, and around 1% of the cases actually were fatal. Now, an asterisk that needs to be placed on that fatality rate is that there were several individuals in this data that actually died of another cause and COVID-19 just happened to be listed. Of course, the CDC will continue to dive into this data and will release more information as it comes. Another thing that should be noted about these numbers is the data likely lags behind what's actually happening in the community because this is a passive reporting system and all of the data may not have been reported to the CDC yet. Now, why is this not unexpected? Well, because we know from the clinical trials these vaccines were not 100%. They didn't prevent 100% of disease. They didn't prevent 100% of infections. If you'll remember, the Moderna and Pfizer vaccines were about 94, 95% effective, and the Johnson & Johnson vaccine was somewhere in the 70% range. That's not 100%. So, Naturally, we would expect there will be breakthrough cases. No vaccine is 100% effective. Now, why is a vaccine not 100% effective? Well, there's lots of reasons for that. Again, I mentioned earlier about individuals may not develop a strong immune response from the vaccine. This tends to happen in older individuals, but could also happen in younger individuals depending on your individual health history whether you have an immune compromised condition or whether your body just for some reason doesn't mount an immune response to the vaccine. Another possibility, of course, is what we've heard a lot about recently, the rise of the variants. We know the virus is mutating. We know additional variants are showing up in our community. And while the vaccines have been tested against many of these, we know there are new ones that are going to continue to pop up throughout time. Of the current variants that are in wide circulation, we know the vaccines actually do pretty well against the UK variant, which is great because it's the most common right now, especially in the United States and other countries. However, we also know that the vaccine may not do as well against the South African and the Brazilian variants. Now, this may be the reason why we're seeing some of the breakthrough cases. Again, more data will be needed before we'll know this for sure. The CDC is looking into genetic sequencing of some of these cases to see if that is indeed the fact. Now, why shouldn't you let this scare you? Well, number one, because it was expected. Again, we know these vaccines were not 100%. They're more effective than we ever thought they could be, but they're still not 100%. Another reason is we still have a high level of circulating virus in our communities. We've unfortunately started to increase the number of cases in the United States again. We were on a downward trajectory for a while, but we've started to see the case numbers rise again all across the country. So again, more cases, more potential for failures. 
That's why it's extremely important that we get people vaccinated as fast as we can so we get closer to that herd immunity state. And then we'll actually finally see these numbers continue to fall again. That's why it's important for everyone who is eligible and willing to get vaccinated as quick as you can. The faster we get vaccinated, the faster we can get these case counts under control, and the faster we can get this pandemic over with. The other thing that unfortunately, and I know this is discouraging to many, that you're going to need to continue to do is continue to wear your masks, keep your distance, and wash your hands. Continue those policies that we've had for the last year or so. Because again, we know vaccines are not 100%. We need to help them along a little bit by doing what we know has worked over the course of the last year to help slow down the rate of infections. All right, that was just a quick video to address these headlines and hopefully reassure you that you shouldn't be scared by the fact that we are having breakthrough cases. Totally expected. But if you look at the data so far, these breakthrough cases are occurring in less than 1% of individuals who are vaccinated. 78 million individuals vaccinated, 5,800 breakthrough cases. That's actually really good. Okay, that's all I have for you today. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope you consider subscribing to my channel. Hit that like button. And as always, be safe out there.